Amanda Stretton uh, is here and robotics and artificial intelligence specialist Emma Byrne uh, joins her as well. Amanda, from a driver's point of view, you have seen the future. Uh, what's your reaction? Well, I've actually been in one of these cars, um, so I'm, I'm very lucky. I've had the experience. And I have to say, I am a racing driver at heart, so I'm obviously always going to be in favour of a car that you drive yourself. But I think the reality is that in this day and age, and in very congested, very over-polluted city centres, a solution like this is the way forward. At the end of the day, the cars that we drive are designed for so many purposes and so many functions. You don't need a four-wheel drive car in a city centre, but you buy one because of the other functionality that you use at other times. Well, the state, state is symbol involved in it. Um, but to call these ones in Milton Keynes, I know the type of cars you're talking about, but these are pods, really. These aren't, these aren't cars, really. And uh, we, we've got that. Amanda, I mean, I think um, uh, you, were, you were saying that they solve a problem there. Of course they do. But uh, Emma, how would, you, how would you see this? Are you excited by this? I am, actually. I'm extremely excited about this um, for a number of reasons. First of all, this is going to open up transport to people who currently can't access it. So, for example, if you've reached that age where they make you take your driving test every few years because maybe your eyes are starting to degenerate or you're cognitively a little slower, you can then hand the driving over to your automated car. Um, or, for example, I know one of the, um, the fantastic videos that's come out of Google headquarters with their driverless car is of a blind man being driven to the places that he enjoys going um, and not relying on another yeah. human to yeah, do yeah, that for you. Yeah, but we're all going to end up like that. They will take <laughs> us to the places that we're supposed to go, that, that the authorities want us to go. Oh, it it will not again. allow us to park in certain places. It will not allow us to stop in certain places. I mean, this is, if this is the future, if this is a dream, this is a nightmare for, for, for really true drivers. But I actually don't think that it is, because at the end of the day, the way the Milton Keynes project is, be is being purported is that these are going to deliver people from train stations into shopping centres. Yeah, so they're just little mini again. trains, these but ones, really. Through, I mean, when you get in it, does it look like how many people can get in there? Is it on track? Could, Could it, it stop if someone's sitting out in front of it? Yes. It's, it's a little two-seater with a pod that comes down the front. This is the car that I've been in. Um, it, it's been developed by a number of car companies and Segway, who, who operate this, this two-wheeled sort of cantilever type um, system, they're very clever and the technology's there, as, as Emma will confirm, the technology's there, we can send a spaceship to but Mars. Emma, yeah, they're very out. clever but they're going to make us less clever, surely they're, they're going to take away any driving skill or any driving enjoyment or any type of choice that you have. I think that's absolutely correct. I mean, these pods are kind of a gateway drug, as it were, to, to the fully driverless car. Um, so the Google car is the example that I think a lot of people are familiar with. Yeah, I think we've got pictures of this. Let's see um, this Google car. Yeah. This is from America. We'll have them very shortly. Um, but, but this is the, the Google cars, the sort of thing that you, you have been in then, isn't no, it, Amanda? No, I've been in the, the pods. The pods, okay. yes. Yeah, but once we've got things like that, or there's a, um, a university research group in Oxford that are developing a 500-pound unit that will use your GPS and little radar sensors and will take over your steering and your gear changes and everything yes. for you. Um, and we'll get to the point where it's not just sort of um, urban commuting, but actually our national roadways will have self-driving right. cars. So, and I was interested in the touch screens and this mm. artificial intelligence, which is one of your expertise. See how you light up when we talk about <laughs> that. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so basically I can say, right, um, I'm heading up to Manchester to see the football. So instead of worrying whether it's going to take me three hours or six hours, depending on traffic, I can basically say, I'm heading up to Manchester to see the football, I'm due to arrive, estimated time of arrival is whatever, I'll watch this movie. Back, mm -hmm, and relax. I can touch the screen and sit there and the car navigates and when we get to the horrible congestion see, on the M6, handy, it could bring mm. me alternative routes. And but I think we're a long way off that type of... Why do you spoil no. everything? Why is me making the, this? Is, I, I, we were seeing the benefit. So you just want to get on this little noddy car in Milton Keynes no, and go I only to the I only want to get on the noddy car in Milton Keynes just to get from the station to the shops. Actually, when you get onto the open road and onto the motorway, I'm afraid I will revert back to yeah. the car uh, that I operate myself. But this and this is this Google car that Emma was talking about uh, here. Yeah. And th this brings it to a different level. 
it's a wee bit scary yeah, actually. That's the that's um, I've yeah, driven alongside this actually in California and it's it's perfect to drive next to um, because I know how it's going to behave. I know it's not going to suddenly sneeze and wrench the steering wheel to the right or have a little lapse in concentration and go through the traffic lights. I know that I can rely on this and that I can rely on the technology in it to know if it is impaired, if it's unable to drive itself, it will pull over, which is better than a lot of humans that I can talk about. And the real benefit from this will come when it actually does start to um, take over the main trunk roads, so the, the motorways, partly because of the reduction in accidents. These things, they're, they're, their reflexes yeah. are far faster than human reflexes. Well, you know, one of the things I'm looking forward to is the reduction, as you say, what it will save me in my rims on my alloy wheels being scraped. <laughs> ah. Because the fortune that I pay that my wife does, never seems to think there's a curb there and constantly the damage is that is one of the big beings of my life the damage to the, the rims, the rims uh, don't get me started on that yeah. it is it's mm -hmm. terrible mm -hmm. but then you need a car with maybe not quite such low profile tires mm, perhaps no, maybe <laughs> my, that car that i'm talking about has it's even got cameras in the wing mirrors. It can yes. show you where the curb is. It and doesn't park itself. Very handy. But she doesn't know it has a camera because she doesn't use any gadgets. Okay. Do you know that there is a car <laughs> that you can get now that will park itself? So oh. you don't even have to tell us. You that and it's me will talk it. during the commercial right. break. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take that break and uh, we've got sport after that with Jackie and we'll be getting our teeth into the series that is Dracula. Alistair, you look positively ferocious. Shall I have the pleasure of wearing a...